Good morning. How do vlogging people do this? <laughs> hmm. It's four o'clock in the morning. Mm. And we're gonna have suhoor. So it is the third day of Ramadan. So the first two I was fasting. Today I'm not gonna fast. I'm gonna try to do like as much as I can, but I'm gonna take breaks in between. I'm not gonna fast the entire month. So now I'm just gonna make a smoothie for Haytham. So in here I put frozen banana, frozen berries, peanut butter, coconut milk, protein powder, and I think, oh, and cottage cheese for some extra protein. And now I'm just gonna blend it. How's the smoothie? Good. I also made, this saved us today because we're a little bit late in waking up, some overnight oats. I don't know how early I can sleep. We slept at 9.30 and now I it's 4. Too late. <laughs> like I need to sleep at 6. <laughs> Okay, so normally we pray all our prayers before we go to sleep, but recently we've been dividing them. Like we pray a good chunk of it before we go to sleep, and then we leave a little bit for suhoor time. So we'll eat and pray and then wrap it up. And now, just now, I can hear the call to prayer, so that means another fasting day has I wish I could hear the adhan properly, like I can hear that it's on, but because of that generator in front of our house, I can barely make out the words, so I can't really repeat after the adhan. Um, but, anyway. So now it is 4.30 a.m. We were really tight with time today, we need to wake up a bit earlier tomorrow. So Haytham's gonna go to the mosque, I'm gonna pray at home, and so then I'm gonna go back to sleep until my daughter wakes up. She usually wakes up around 6, 6.15, 6.30. So we'll see. And I'll wake up with her again. Good morning. Lily was generous. Lily slept, slept until 6.35. Thank you. I thank you. Bye. <laughs> Kusmalahma, where are we going? Nam yeah. Let's go check what's inside the mosque. Yeah. What the mummy some moshe says? Nah. Then on Ramadani Bav number? Eighty gallet? Gol. What do you think? What's the present today? Miss Arabat Miss Kinkit is on the Chakalpa. Uh we don't know that. <laughs> ah what do we say? <laughs> ah, what do we say? Uh, ah? Miss a bit lemma. At the book. Eh? Al? Al? Alta. Hamdulilla. Alta. Is this mommy Utlab? Yer Hamukola. Aya. Hamdulilla. Bravo. Yeah, is this? Hamkola. Yer Hamukola. Bravo. The daily routine. No nee. Kusan number golm. Oh, you're sharing? So y'all got? The Bismillah. <laughs> Outfit of the day chosen by yours truly, not me. Good morning again. I'm more alive now. Um, just dropped Lily to nursery. It's now 8.30 in the morning. And today should be my productive day. I need to do groceries. And I'm like, you know, on the days that I'm not fasting, which by the way, I'm not fasting because I'm pregnant. I think somebody will always ask, why are you not fasting? And I get a ton of questions, people asking me to advise them if they should fast when they're pregnant. And it's just like, I, it's, it's, it's sweet that you think I can answer that, but I can't. I don't know your body. I don't know your history. I don't know you. I don't know your doctor. I don't know anything. So I think it's one of those things where 
thank God there is an excuse not to fast. If you feel any harm to your baby or to yourself by any means, then don't fast. But then also, it doesn't mean don't fast at all. So for me personally, I talk to my doctor and I know my history and I know my body and I know how I feel. So this is what I'm able to do. I'm able to fast a little bit here and there and then not fast a little bit here and there. So I'm trying my best and inshallah, may God make it easy. Anyway. So today is the non-fasting day, which should also be the workout day because life has shown the days that I'm fasting, I just don't find the energy to go for a workout, which last year, by the way, I did. I did work out regularly, but this year, circumstances are different. So I'm sitting here and I'm like, I'm not fasting. I should go to Pilates. I'm not fasting. I should go to Pilates. And I am in zero mood to go to Pilates. (laughs) But I'm like, movement is good. I should do it. So I think I'm going to do it. I was feeling extra. I was like, maybe I can do groceries before I go to Pilates after I drop Lily. But now I looked at the time. That does not seem like a realistic option, especially since I'm still in a kaftan. I still need to change my clothes, which by the way, in Ramadan, like that's one of the things I really love. Um, I don't know how it is where you live in the world, but like in this region, I find that like most women in my circle, at least like in Ramadan, we switch to wearing only like dresses and kaftans and stuff. This one is from Dubai and I got a matching one for Lily. So I hope to show it to you later. I love it. Uh, yeah. So my little TED talk on my own in my car in front of the nursery has just made me realize I should go move. Yalla. Let's go to Pilates. By the way, every day I want to show this and then I forget. So one of Lily's teachers told me that in front of the nursery, they grow fresh basil. So now for pesto pasta, me and Lily pick our basil from the nursery. I just want to show you. So wait. Ta-da! This is just one bush. They have a ton. So we just pick our basil from here and we use it it in like salads and pesto and stuff, which is nice. Alter ego moment. So the Pilates I go to actually is inside a hotel and normally I already come in gym clothes But I needed to change but now I need to get from the bathroom to the Ladies gym. So this is how I shall enter Here we go Here we go So quiet (laughs) everyone's sleeping Like mornings in Ramadan Nothing's happening Everything's closed Majority of restaurants in Qatar uh, during fasting hours are closed, by the way. You can only get delivery. Okay. Time to go. Hi, hi. Again, I fell asleep for way too long. I had all kinds of plans. My to-do list was so long. And I napped and I just couldn't wake up. So I am in this new kaftan that I got from Dubai yesterday. It's a brand called 800 Taylor. So they make like everything custom for you. And I love it. So much color for me, but I love it. And I got a matching one for Lily. Wait, matching one for Lily. Can't wait to see her in this one. So cute. And somehow the day has slipped away from my fingers. It's time for nursery pickup. Never made it to groceries. (laughs) Gonna do groceries together with Lily, then come home, cook, and really hope that she lets me like take a picture of us together because I think it's gonna be so cute. So I'm back and I'm in the kitchen. I did my groceries with Lily and I'm gonna make lentil soup. So I've cut the things already. She's watching Paw Patrol. Um, Let me just show you what I got have one large onion, one cup of carrots, one cup of zucchini, one large potato, one cup of lentils, and here is one teaspoon of salt, two teaspoon paprika, and one teaspoon cumin. So on medium-high heat, I am going to put my vegetables all into the pot with like one or two tablespoons of olive oil and let that sit for a little bit, maybe like 10 minutes or so. Fry, I mean, not sit. I'm also gonna add already my seasoning. So this is what it's looking like over here. We'll let that be for like 10 minutes or so. Then we're gonna add our chicken stock and the lentils, but that in a moment. 
So, and for the main, I'm gonna just make burgers. It's just me and Haitham today, so it's easy. I'm not posting anybody, so burgers are hit the spot. Um, but I already vlogged the entire process of how I make homemade burgers like two vlogs ago, so I'm not gonna show any of that. Just gonna get around to making it because the thought is in like one hour. So we better get cracking. On another note, don't you just love the sleeve and the pop of color and I don't know. It's so nice. Huh? Wait, chaos and Paw Patrol. Okay, it's been roughly like 10 minutes, so now I'm gonna add in the lentils. And also about four cups of water and two um, chicken stock cubes. If I had fresh chicken stock, if I had fresh fresh chicken stock, I would use it, but I don't have any. So I'm gonna put four cups of water and two chicken cubes. So the disaster that follows cooking, but also at the same time. Um, so now this is what the situation looks like. I might add a little bit more water because you want everything to be covered. And then as soon as it starts to simmer, which is probably in like 30 seconds, I'll cover it uh, on medium, maybe for about 30 minutes or so, whenever is the next moment I have free time to deal with this one. This is what we have. I might add a little bit more water because you want everything to be fully covered, which it kind of is. Um, so as soon as it starts to simmer, which feels like in 30 seconds or so, I'll put it on medium heat, cover it. Um, the embarrassing part is that I actually don't have a matching lid for this, so I'm gonna have to figure something out. That's the next thing on my to-do list or purchase list to get like proper pans and pots that have proper covers and stuff like that. Anyway, uh, and leave it for like 30 minutes or so and then hand blend it with the blendy thingy. So let's see. And that's a wrap on the soup. I just tasted it. Everything is super soft and tender. Uh, it was actually less than 30 minutes. It was like 20 even. Um, so now I'm just gonna blend it and see if the taste is good and add some lemon and chalas. Okay, yalla, here's to hoping that this whole soup doesn't splurge on my clothes, but it seems unlikely. Bismillah. Oh, okay. I'll let you know a secret. This is the first time in my life I'm making lentil soup. And I tasted it, and it's magnificent. Everyone always told me that it's so easy to make, but I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. I never believed them. It's really so easy to make. A moment of truth. Squeeze lemon generously. Maybe a little bit more. Let's see. I think when me and Haitham eat, I'll add a little bit of chili powder because one day I tasted a lentil soup that had a little bit of a kick to it and we both really liked it. But of course, Lily, like she can't tolerate spice yet. So let's see. Bismillah. Mm. Follow everything exactly as I did it. Just make sure your liquid covers the stuff that you have in the pot. So I would have put more um, liquid. Mommy, between soupy, best part of you is shorba. Shorba? Soupy, soupy. Soup, yeah. Kasan hair, yummy? Soupy, soupy. Do you guys like it? Shashaba? Oh, this? Bismillah. Who's this? Who's this? Huh? Dragon. Dragon? to pull on that prayer gown again, finished eating, finished having tea, put our toddler to sleep, and now we're gonna pray night prayers, and Qatar, it depends on the year. Like, here the mosques have such amazing reciters, and there's such an abundance of mosques, but then when Haytham is home, a lot of the time, like by the end of the day, we're so tired, so we prefer to pray at home. And alhamdulillah, I'm lucky, because he can recite. If I was on my own, I can't recite Quran enough to like do night prayers and follow along with like a good chunk of Quran. So our friend gave us this stand many years ago. We use it every year. So he stands here, he recites, I'm in the back and I grab a chair because at this point I get tired. 
but yeah, prayer time. And then So this is the Quran I like to use every Ramadan. This is actually the first one that I ever got from like the mosque actually 14 years ago. It's seen life as you can see. I have so many different like English Qurans that I use for studying that I recommend online for other people and get for other converts, etc. Um, but this one is like my go-to, I think just because I'm so used to it. However, like I would not recommend this for anybody who's like new to Islam because it's very tricky. So it's not just the English translation, but there's also commentary and like it's embedded into the translation to make you feel like it's part of it. So like if you're new to Islam or something or not really sure, it's quite hard to differentiate what's the translation and what is the interpretation. And in the end of the day, interpretation is like the take of the person who is translating it. So this is a very tricky one. I would actually not recommend this for anybody um, who is looking into like getting a translation. So I don't know what's the point of the story. I guess it's like a just a disclaimer. But I love the look of like a worn out put on something that's been like heavily used. Good morning. It's 3.45. Yesterday was a little bit too tight, so I tried... Oh my god, vision is still blurry. <laughs> Speedy time. Blueberries. Coconut cream, cottage cheese, just because I have some left and it's good protein, peanut butter, protein powder. <laughs> is back on we just heard the call to prayer it's 4 30 um i need to pray i'm awake now and never did i ever think that i'm gonna be marrying salmon at four o'clock in the morning but i'd rather get it done for my daughter's lunchbox and then just like yesterday i'm gonna sleep until she wakes up again and then we continue with the day so today is gonna be our Ramadan day. Where do you mean? Ah, here. D4. Wow. Happy luck! <laughs> oh no! dramatic <laughs> Wait, we try her hands before she cries that her dress is wet. I don't have a towel. Oh no! 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 Oh no!
Our energy levels are a bit higher today, so going on a little family walk before nursery time. Huh? Night squad or is he school? But this guy has to come with us everywhere. But guess who's in charge of carrying him? Lily is hiding. Where's Lily? I don't know. Did you want a shotgun on the eating camera? <laughs> Lily just gifted me, or like actually pulled this flower <laughs> off someone's bush, but she gifted it to me, so I'm gonna embrace it. Mm. Who gave me this one? Lily. Thank you. Aida. What's the time? Like 7.30 in the morning? It's 7.45. Oh. Oh. We have become people morning. we have <laughs> never been before. I would have never imagined. In Ramadan, when yes. fasting, 7.45 on a walk, happily, never, never. We've been married yeah. eight years, never. Yeah, but honestly, this is the best schedule. Yeah, no, like if you so can. Uh, and the weather allows for it, so. But we sacrifice social life. True. Because all our friends are awake, like, when we're long asleep. Yeah, we sleep about what? 9 Like, I woke 30? up in the morning and I had like 60 new messages from our friends at 11.30 p.m. Uh, we were long gone at 11.30 p.m. Do you have any idea what this whistle, like, where do I know it from? I have no Ask idea. I have no know. idea. And the baby, yani, mama, mama, you have to be like baby, baby, baby. And then you go with Goodbye. Oh, okay. Completely this ignored me. This is her me. signature move. She doesn't like what you're saying. She's like, bye. <laughs> hello, hello. I just woke up from a nap and i finished doing my grocery list i'm probably gonna do like potatoes and salmon tonight and i looked at the time and i was like okay i'm gonna go grocery shopping but then i realized no like i'm behind on my studies which is a very important part of ramadan for me and for many years like before being married and before having kids like this was almost all of ramadan for me like this would be the time thanks lily this would be the time of year, like the majority of the day, unless I was eating or praying or sleeping, I would be studying. So this is like the time for me um, to really like try to get more beneficial knowledge and learn more. And for the last couple of years, or not like even last couple of years, I'd say the last year or year and a half, I've been really on this quest of like kind of, I heard someone make this prayer and it really resonated with me. It's kind of like, trying to make the Quran your friend because I realized like as much as I try to read it I don't really know that much about it so I've been on this journey for like a year now and obviously it's gonna last me my entire lifetime so this is something that I'm into and then in Ramadan I try to like be more specific like choose a specific either surah or either subject I'm interested in or either like certain ayahs in the Quran that I'm interested in and focus on that more heavily so um, so yeah that's basically what I am trying to do, and then when I feel like I start to lose my concentration when I'm listening to something, I like to do like a puzzle or something with my hands. I'm just that type of personality and I know many of you are like that as well. If I don't have a hands-on puzzle, then I'll do like one online and a different tab on my computer and I find that really helpful. And then when I am studying, I like to use this Quran in specific, which is different than the one I would use for reading Quran. But for studies, I feel because it's so big, like it's fairly big, so I can take notes in it. Um, and before every chapter of the Quran, there is an explanation. So it's like, what was the period of revelation? Um, what's the surah going to be talking about? What was like the purpose of it? What was going, you know, down in Arabia at the time? So it helps you to kind of like already understand the mindset that you're going to enter the surah with to understand what was happening at the time. 
And on another note, other than my personal studies, I, what was I gonna say? Oh, on Saturday, we're hosting this, or actually my friends are hosting it, I'm just attending. Like ladies, iftar, like if you're lonely in Qatar or you wanna make new friends, kind of iftar at a really nice hotel. And I think like a hundred women have signed up. So there'll be like speakers and we'll talk and there'll be like games and stuff with prizes. And then um, in the end of it, we all break our fast together and then we all go our separate ways, but inshallah with like new friends and new connections. And then my friends asked me to speak at this event for 15 minutes, up to 20 minutes on stage. And I'm really struggling to find the topic. Like I have a couple of ideas. Um, one of them is to do that same angle that I did in the end of the last video. But then I also recently studied like the honor and dignity of a Muslim in Islam or like any human being actually in Islam and what kind of dignity you owe to other creation and how we should never, um, how to put it, like we should never taint the reputation of another person and how we're not supposed to backbite but like this is very general and like blah, blah, blah. but the way i studied the topic was actually really really nice like i teared up in the end and i was like subhanallah this is the beauty of this religion and what people make it out to be like it's just like, shame and then i thought maybe i'll go through my old notes because like i have a ton i even have some of my like favorite gems that i've written into pdf files and uploaded on a google drive so i'll link that down below as well if you haven't like read them or gone through them they're like my little notes on certain parts of the quran that made me reflect in a way that i found emotional or moving or touching um yeah so i'm gonna study for a little bit hopefully beneficial knowledge for me and then maybe something i can share with others as well but i think this is important to incorporate into your ramadan as well um not just the food and not just the decor and not just you know a lot a lot of it also for your heart like we should increase ourselves in beneficial knowledge inshallah make the effort to to gain it and always remember that knowledge does not equal guidance because you could you could be looking at somebody and being like, oh, they're so knowledgeable. Oh, they're like, so like they're this and they're that and putting them on some kind of pedestal. But like knowledge is not guidance, right? Like beneficial knowledge, we pray that it leads us to guidance, but like knowledge itself doesn't guarantee guidance. Like you could be the most knowledgeable person in the room, but it makes you kind of like this instead of humble you. So we always pray that knowledge humbles us, inshallah. And um, may we be guided to the rightful knowledge as well, not the stuff of the internet world so hello so i'm still here i need to go to lily in five minutes literally i ended up not studying anything new for myself which i actually feel really guilty about but maybe later in the day i can manage to find time for that um, cause it's always on my priority list. Um, however, I did figure out a topic. I still need to like narrow it down in my brain to make sure it makes sense. And if it's like a timeline, I have a lot of like different bullet points in my brain scattered around right now, but it's like my passion topic always is that we need to connect to the Quran, right? Like we have it. It's so amazing, but most of us are unaware. That's like my theme topic in life right now. But putting that aside, I think also it's necessary to always look around and understand the times we live in, the people we deal with and what's the circumstance at large. And I think as a goal, our goal for the majority of the Muslim community is not to get them to follow the rules or the, the majority or like the goal, I think at this point, if we look around is try to get people's hearts to reconnect and it's to give people hope and try to live up to what we're actually meant to be and supposed to do. Like we're supposed to be supportive and nourishing and encouraging and kind and loving and caring and supportive and all of these things. And somehow, I don't know, I feel like a lot of the time it's fallen somewhere in the back burner, but you need to also remember that if you look at the Quran, God, you know, nurtured and wanted to see a change of heart long before he ever asked for a change 
in action or in following the rules or in like acts of worship or whatever it's all about the heart and it's all about giving people hope so i think that's the place where we're at and then i'm going to talk a little bit about prayer and connecting with prayer and what we're saying in prayer and you know and how like even it's a community religion like because the n in yeah and it means we so we worship you and we ask for your help it's not me so it's a community thing. It's a it's an ummah thing. It's a togetherness thing. So it's such a big importance. Like we're not meant to do this life alone. People lose hope sometimes. They feel like, you know, they have all these faults and all these flaws. But we need to accept people despite, like with all their flaws and with all their faults. And like it's a, you know, it's, I don't know. A Quran, the Quran is like a conversation with our hearts. And we should be an extension of that. We should not be something that contradicts this beautiful teaching and book and Quran and life that we have. So we need to step up. You know, we need to learn to have hope so we can give hope to others and like just be the light. So yeah, basically the Quran came to change the way you think and the way you deal, whether it's in business or with family or with friends or with animals or, you know, it should purify you and make you better. And if it's making you like, eh, then there, there's something wrong. That's not Islam. Islam is supposed to make you, ah. <laughs> not, ah. you know what I mean? This was supposed to be like a inspiring talk, but I feel like I'm rambling. Um, anyway, got to go take Lily. See you. Hello, hello, random insert, but I am on my way to that ladies of thought. Um, hundred people signed up and I have like a little 15 minute speech. Alhamdulillah, I managed to gather my thoughts. If I manage, I'll try to get like a behind the scenes of that. I don't think I'll be able to record much first because I'm going to be talking to a lot of people. I don't think I'll have time to vlog. And because it's a ladies only thing, I think a lot of women just won't want to be recorded so just for the sake of mindfulness i don't think i'll i'll take my camera out unless i'm recording that um little talk that i'm planning to give so pray for me well actually by the time <laughs> i release this vlog this talk would have been long gone but uh inshallah i hope you know it reaches the hearts of people <laughs> it's crazy no matter how many times i do this i get so nervous every single time it's been 15 years, but still, I feel like you can see my heartbeat through my dress. But yeah, bismillah. Uh, Ramadan Kareem, everybody. I'm so happy to see you here. And it's such a surreal moment because we did this last two years ago. And somehow it feels like forever ago, but at the same time, it feels like it was just yesterday. But the feeling in my heart is the same. If I look in front of me and I see all of you, I think we're 100 in total. I am so immensely, insanely grateful because I don't want to sound like a broken record, but back in the day, this is all that I craved for, and this is all that I prayed for. So I want you not to take this for granted that you have these women around you, these people who are on the same journey with you. You know, don't just talk to the people who are next to you and in your table and go around and make new connections and make new friends because it can be a really isolating journey, at least for me it was. I always had faith in my heart, but it was the most difficult thing seemingly on planet Earth to find like-minded people who would share the same values, who would be on the same journey, who would be in the same wavelength. So because you guys have it, I'm so happy for you. And also I feel like in a way my own prayers were answered. So I, uh, I'm so grateful. So for me personally, I don't want to say things that I've always said, so I'll try to talk to you about something different. And that is a personal journey of mine since last Ramadan. So every time we enter Ramadan, we have goals, right? We have a certain checklist or we have certain things we want to accomplish. And then a friend of mine told me not to make it too overwhelming. Think of three things. So number one, think of something that you're already doing, but you want to do more of. So it's something good that you're already doing, but you want to increase. Then think of something that you want to reduce in your life. So it's maybe not something that is that great, but you just want to reduce a little bit. Because I've been there. I've had Ramadan where I try to be, in my opinion, a superhero. And afterwards, I feel so burnt out and I feel that's not the purpose. And then the third thing, try to pick up a new habit that inshallah will stick with you for the rest of your life. And try to enter every Ramadan with that mindset. And inshallah, this is a little bit more doable. So for me, last Ramadan, a year ago exactly, I heard a friend of mine make this dua 
that I've never heard in my life. And I think it's interesting because she didn't think anything of it, but you can say something, but then whoever is listening, it hits them differently based on where they are in that moment in their life. So I think it was something that I was just meant to hear. And her dua was like something along the lines of, uh, Ya Allah, please make the Quran my friend and make me a friend of the Quran and make this journey easy for me. And I, I kept thinking about it and I was like, what does she mean? Like I've been Muslim for like what now, subhanAllah, 14 years. And I read the Quran, like I go through it in Ramadan, you know, I, I've studied it, I've converted, I've done all these things, but I feel if I sit with myself, I cannot think that, oh, we're friends, or this book is a friend of mine, or it's really changing me from the inside out. And I went on this quest of trying to understand why that is. Um, and the more I got into it, I feel in the last year, my life has maybe changed more than ever before. Because for the first time ever, I'm not just reading the translation or trying to learn the Arabic, I'm actually trying to see how it is speaking to my heart. Because I think it's vital to understand this is a conversation with our hearts. It's not just something to skim through. It's not just something to try to complete really quickly in Ramadan. So for me, it has been life-changing and this is a goal I would recommend everybody to take or add to their at least life goals, if not Ramadan goals. And one day I came across um, certain ayahs that hit me differently. Again, depending on where you are in your life at a certain moment in time, I think certain things speak to you. So for me, that was uh, Surah Ma'arij. And God explains the prayer in a way that I've never thought about it before. So he says, if you're somebody who is constantly in distress, or you're somebody who is greedy, or you're somebody who has these traits, the remedy for it is prayer. And then I looked again at myself and I was like, you know, I pray, alhamdulillah, I don't miss prayers. It's part of my daily routine. But then if I look at myself, or if all of you look at yourselves currently inside and deeply, do you feel that your five prayers are making that impact on you? That is a character transformation for you? That is taking away your greed and that is taking away your stress? And inshallah, you're a lot better than me, but for me personally, I felt like, no, this is not something that I'm experiencing. So a new quest started. Why is that prayer not having that effect on me? Why is it just something that I do rather than something that really changes me and has this character transformation quality? The more I looked into prayer, I realized it's all about reflection. Because subhanAllah, like God and His infinite wisdom has created us this institution of prayer where we literally have to leave everything behind. You cannot scroll on your phone, you cannot talk to anybody, you cannot look around. Literally, physically, you are restrained. But then, we're in that position, but our minds and our hearts still function the way they function. So even if we all pray next to each other in one line physically, and outwardly we're all the same, the majority of us inside, it's not the same. Most of us probably are still thinking about those things that we should have just left behind, but they're still continuing on in our minds. And that was me, or that is me. So when I delve deeper into that, I understood the true reflection can only come if I train my thoughts to also have that kind of restraint that my physical body is doing. So that's the only part where reflection can truly begin. And that's the only time where I feel that prayer can really start having the effect that it was always meant to have in the first place. It's not meant to become a mundane thing in your daily habitual life. It's supposed to be something transforming. It's supposed to be something like the Tura says that takes away your distress. And actually the ayahs that follow it, it says that these are people who hold their trusts and they are honorable and they don't you know, succumb to dishonesty. So all these traits actually should come to you from your prayer, and I never thought about it this way. So I went even deeper. Um, Alhamdulillah, I'm blessed this year to have a wonderful group of new Muslims with me, and uh, some of them have expressed an interest to get more deeper into the prayer. So at first, it was just something I thought, okay, I'm gonna relearn so that inshallah we can discuss together and I can teach them 
but it ended up having another level of transformation inside me, which I hope and pray for everybody as well. Um, so I started going again, ayah by ayah. I was like, okay, if I look at my prayer, what does it consist of? Okay, there's Surah Al-Fatiha. Okay, I've learned it 14 years ago. I know what it says. I understand the meaning. But have I ever really tried to understand what it's saying to me? It's not a monologue. It's a conversation with God. So what is packed in there? And there's two ayahs that really stuck with me. And I think one of them especially is pertinent tonight. Because I look at you and I think of that. And that's yaka na'udu wa yaka nasta'in. And... I sat with that and I was like, okay, makes sense, feels good. But then anybody who knows even a little bit of Arabic would know that the N in now, where the N in the Sta'in implies that it's we. God doesn't tell me to ask for myself only. He tells me to ask for all of us. And that for me shows that this is a religion of togetherness. So I was never meant to do it on my own in the first place. That's why I was always craving for the sense of community. God could have told me to ask just for myself, each man for their own selves. But in that prayer that he tells us to recite in every single prayer, which means if you pray five times a day, you will be praying with this at least 17 times a day, if not more. And we ask not just for ourselves, but we ask for all of us. So this is a religion of togetherness, and it's a religion of community, and it's a religion of unity. And I think, <laughs> and I think this is such a beautiful sunnah that we have forgotten. I think we got a little bit too individualistic somewhere along the way, but we need to remember that religion is here to unite us. It's not here to divide us. And what a blessing, again, if you look around in this room, to be surrounded by people who, inshallah, become your friends or are already your friends that don't judge you, that don't look down on you, that don't think you're doing this right and you're not doing this right. And even if they do come to correct you in some kind of way, they would be doing it from a place of love, not from a place of religious self-righteousness. And I think that is all too common nowadays. And that's a place where we really need to look within because as long as we are alive, God's doors are open. And any human being who closes those doors is just not within our rights. So I feel, or as much as I see people on a daily basis and their struggles and, and my own struggles, um, I just feel human beings sometimes close that door. We make people feel not good enough and we make pe people feel unworthy. But the reality of God's message is that like, no matter how far you've gone or no matter what you've done or no matter how you've sinned or how unworthy you think you are, the doors are open. And it's my responsibility to, to let you in. It's not my right to ever tell you that there is no space here for you. So that's why this gathering, again, makes me so emotionally grateful because it shows that at least us in this room, we can only be responsible for our own selves. We cannot look at X, Y, Z and see what they're doing, but change starts from within. And I'm so glad to see all of you here, inshallah, being part of that change. Um, so again, don't take this for granted because this room is full of so much mercy and so much goodness. And inshallah, we can be uplifting towards one another. Because um, <clears throat> every single person in this room, I'm sure, has fought battles that you thought maybe you were never going to survive. Or, you know, you're feeling things or you're going through things. But it's about us being there for each other. You don't always need advice from somebody else, but you need somebody to be there for you and to understand you. And then the next ayah is with the Fatiha, Ihdina Siratul Mustaqeen. I talked about it uh, quite extensively, so I don't want to repeat myself, but again, Ihdina, the Na implies that it's about us. It's not guide me on the path of guidance, guide us. We want to make it together. We want to get that together. Um, and I hope we encourage that. So we are not among those who defile others and break others, but no matter where you are in your journey of faith and your journey of life, that we, we are in this together, you know? We, we're in this together um, and we're trying to navigate this life the best we know how to. And um, yeah, <laughs> alhamdulillah for all of it. Um, I'm sure you know this, I'll end with this, um, that there's a special place in heaven for those who have gathered because they love each other for the sake of God, or they've come together to remember God. 
So I hope, um, inshallah, maybe we're united there one day. And I pray that we have hearts that see clearly, and we have hearts that see the truth is truth, and falsehood is falsehood, because not everybody does. Um, and I hope that we are able to be the change that we want to see in the world. And may we be united, and of course, always with Palestine. Amen. How is that, Eileen? Is it good? <laughs> Hello. <laughs>